Hey guys, we have some significant astrology to get into today. It's going to be a bit of a different report. We've got to take a little trip down memory lane, look at some things in a historical context, specifically the year 1989, specifically the month of March 1989. And that's because that was the last time that we had the aspect that we have going on this week lining up previously. Mars and Jupiter are coming into an exact conjunction this week in the sign of Gemini. Now, Mars and Jupiter come into a conjunction every two years, so this is not a super rare alignment, but they haven't aligned in the sign of Gemini since 1989. And there were some things that happened in March of 1989, right around the days where this activation happened, that I feel like we may see sort of like a uh, phase two, chapter two of, or just these same type of themes kind of emerging now in their new modernized updated versions. So I want to look at the past in the context of where we're at and the future and, you know, perhaps how these things are interplaying, coming together, or how we can gain some foresight about what's to come based on hindsight and what has been. So very interesting times, of course, on like a more mundane level, this is going to probably be quite an explosive, frustrating, tense week. We want to have patience, self-control, self-discipline, not prematurely acting on things. That's going to be your your best way to go and maneuver through the energy coming at you this week. And we're going to get into all of it. We've got lots to talk about today. So let's do that. Let's get into the report. Let's put all the pieces together, past and future, what's going on, how it might be manifesting in the present and what things might be looking like for us as we move through our week and the rest of our summer and the rest of our year rippling out from, you know, what we've got going on now. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the day where we are narrating the shift of the ages. And if you stick with me till the end of this report, I have done a collective tarot reading for us today as well. I like to tap the energy field for more than one modality whenever I'm doing these energy overviews just to get an additional energetic perspective on what's going on out there. So that'll be at the end. There could be some messages in there for you. Let's start with the astrology, start at the beginning. And as I've said, we've got a lot to talk about today. There's a lot of information that I want to convey. And Mercury is retrograde right now, and I'm a Gemini ascendant. So I'm going to do my best to take what's in here and put it out there in the way that makes the most uh, like logical streamlined sense. There are kind of like three things that I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the historical context of this Mars Jupiter conjunction that we have going on because as I said in my intro, I feel like the themes that went on last time this happened could very much be reflected in terms of where we're at now, but like sort of in the modernized upgrade version, of course. I also wanna talk about the more mundane ways that this energy could be manifesting on the ground in terms of the way that it's, you know, <laughs> people are dealing with it and the way that it's kind of enmeshing itself with our experiences as we move through it, because it is likely to be a very kind of like contentious, volatile, hostile time. Um, obviously, the greater overall themes that I feel like are emerging with this energy in the context of our transition of ages as well. And also the best ways that we can navigate this energy, you know, the wisdom and the lessons that are sort of encompassed with it, and how to apply those to our daily lives as we move through this period of time to, um, I don't know, I guess sort of get the most productive, least discouraging outcomes. Also the symbolism I want to say associated with the transits. I want to touch on that as well because the Sabian symbols, which are the group of symbols that describe each and every one of the degrees of the zodiac are quite interesting and validating and telling and descriptive in the context of the alignments that are going on themselves and what the overall themes I feel like coming through here are also. So all of that, you guys, like that's my plan and I'm going to try to get it done and I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope I don't make too many mistakes in uh, trying to get this information out. 
So I do want to say, you know, to start off, I do feel like this is overall like this period of time right now and not necessarily like it could be like things that are happening literally this week or on this day could themselves be something that is contributing to something that is creating a spiritual revival or conscious awakening within us somehow. But those are the greater themes that I feel like will emerge moving forward as a result of whatever goes on now, some type of collective spiritual revival or conscious awakening like mass life bulb moment happening um probably coming through though like trials and tribulations and challenges and contention things that we're coming up against that we are having to break through and overcome but on the other side of that like this light bulb moment this whole new day everything's in color and like things are not going to go back to the way they were before but like i said you know it could be things that are literally happening like this week like like events or situations or just like light bulb moments that we're having personally that kind of change everything for us or it could be like things that are happening right now that are going to snowball out and like down the road their ultimate consequence will be that same type of like light bulb moment or like um you know awakening that is like extrapolated out to the general whole like on a more collective level or something okay and all of that being said i do now want to talk about you know what happened in 1989 march of 1989 i've got it written on my little board over here i'm gonna put a little chart of it right up here so you can see the last time that we had mars and jupiter come into a conjunction in the sign of gemini um before i start talking about that i should generally describe this aspect i've been doing if you guys have been following my channel we've been talking about this the past couple weeks you know what's going on mars is our energy of course mars is the lord of war and it's our action and it's our motivation and it's our willpower and it's our courage and it's our strength it's the masculine energy divine masculine energy jupiter is the planet that expands things it's truth it's perspective it's the bigger picture it's good luck it's good fortune generally when we have mars and jupiter coming together this is a time of very fortunate or blessed actions it also represents exponential growth of course mars is energy and jupiter grows things so it's this huge surge of energy to expand to grow and in the sign of gemini that's going to be about the mind it's also going to give us a really big mouth people are going to have a really hard time containing themselves this also takes the ego and supersizes it, it can make us very self-righteous very sort of like domineering and self-aggrandized and like it can be very much know-it-all energy but it also can bring these bigger picture bigger perspective and it can it can be right to action as well so um Mars and Jupiter, it's it, coming together is always, always going to be a very peak energy, very, very like high energy, expanded energy period of time. And we have this every two years. Every two years, there's an energetic peak when Mars and Jupiter come together. This year, it just happens to be in the sign of Gemini. So this is not a super rare transit, you know, once every two years. However, what is making it very, very interesting to me is the last time that these two planets aligned in the sign of Gemini, which was, we got to throw it back like 35, 36 years to get back to 1989, March 12th of 1989. And that week was crazy. And that like 10 day period was very, very significant. Okay. And again, when I tell you, when I read to you guys, like what happened then, and we talk about, you know, sort of the things that are going on now, I feel like you're going to understand why I'm like, okay, times now could be reflecting what happened then sort of like taken up to the next level. And um, it's just very, very interesting how astrology works and functions and come together. I will also tell you this Mars Jupiter conjunction that we have right now, it's because of the placement of the other planets the moon is the moon is activating it further okay the moon is in sagittarius which is ruled by jupiter so the moon is energizing and triggering whatever is happening with jupiter who is in the exact conjunction with mars and the moon in sagittarius is opposite gemini which is where this activation is happening so we have an exact opposition between the moon which is a trigger for planetary ener energetics and activations the moon sets things off and we've already got a, an energy that is very very set off okay so the amount of emotional reactivity right now is likely to be off the charts i'm getting a bit scattered and that's probably going to happen throughout the course of this report because now i want to tell you guys like sort of red flag be very careful with your emotional responses to things your emotional reactions to things a lot of people are going to be having very harsh volatile hostile contentious 
angry or aggressive or even violent reactions to feeling suppressed, limited, held down, especially by authority, government, rules, regulations, um, anything sort of blocking their path, blocking their way to, you know, either on one hand, like fighting the good fight, being this is a very heroic energy on one hand, but it's also can take things way over the top. There's no restraint. There's no hold back. Like self-discipline is really lacking in this energy. And a lot of people, when we've got the moon there in the opposition, it's these emotional reactions. Like this is like crimes of passion. You know what I mean? Like this is like just such huge emotions and the anger can be really huge. And then coming up against the authoritative influence, a lot of people could really be getting in trouble with like police or authority or you know the powers that be or the people in control right now or yeah like people like authority figures that are in control over them right now there could be major clashes going on also between like children and parents or like employees and upper management or like um soldiers and generals like they're like the apprentice and the master anywhere where there's like an older and a younger version of things this is also like man like the common man versus the government as well like major clashes volatile clashes violent clashes um that are really coming from this place of uh passionate like emotional reaction and honestly the wisdom here right now you guys when it comes to our actions like they have to be guided by well on one hand you know the good fight and doing what we know is right and a lot of people are going to be guided by that but we also have to be very very careful like reckless actions impulsive actions again like flying off the handle as a result of these like exploding emotions that we can't contain that is Ah, that it's just like a recipe for a disaster. Okay. Um, this energy, the lesson here is self-discipline and self-control in the face of the impulse to do everything but that huge impulse, huge urge to act prematurely here, to instantaneously react, to instantaneously respond, to try to solve our issues or solve our problems. But the thing is like, that's just not the answer. It is wisdom gained through experience applied. It's like pumping the brakes when all you want to do is fly forward. It's slowing down. It's non-action in the face of like this burning fire to like you know, just take somebody out. Um, we really, really, really need to be careful in the what we're saying and the choices that we're making and in the actions and behaviors that we are allowing to manifest through our being right now. Um, again, because this could be a time of some really great karmic lessons, some really, you know, strong karmic backlash, um, some very significant or destructive breakdowns. But on the other hand, this is also a period of time for some huge, huge life-changing breakthroughs, overcoming um, like our lower nature in a way that is redefining like the future path we're walking down, like uh, gaining a level of maturity that totally changes what we're going to be attracting into our life going forward. And by, you know, maturity also like redefining the way that we're thinking about stuff and the way that we're acting as a result. Uh, generally though, it's probably going to be quite a life-changing period of time. And again, coming back ultimately to whatever triggers off or whatever sets off right now there will be some type of spiritual revival conscious awakening or like mass light bulb moment that happens and that changes the future trajectory of trajectory of things as a result okay so now let's get into the uh historical data that i wanted to bring up the year 1989 on march 12th of 1989 we had mars and jupiter come to a conjunction at zero degrees of the sign of gemini now this was crazy okay it was actually a couple, it, this was a, um, a dual sign conjunction. The conjunction actually began at 29 degrees of Taurus and then Jupiter changed degrees with Mars. And as a result of that, it became instead of a, cause Mars takes two days to transit any degree. So when you're dealing with a Mars conjunction, it's typically about a day and a half or a two day conjunction. But because Jupiter also just so happened to have reached the end of his degree, 
minute by the time that Mars was ready to change degrees as well because Jupiter takes longer to change degrees than Mars does. They actually moved from 29 degrees of Taurus where they were conjoined together to zero degrees of Gemini where they finished their conjunction. Now, being at zero degrees, of course, that is going to be a critical activation point. But let me tell you guys, like, and I, I'm going to say, okay, I did, I, I did not spend like tons of hours on the research for this. I spent a couple of hours, a couple of good hours doing the research for this report today. But I, the, the, the timeline that I'm giving you right now is from Wikipedia. So I can't guarantee 100% to the dot Mercury's retrograde right now. So there could be like a little error or something in some of this. It's from Wikipedia. Okay. But on March 12th of 1989, the exact same day, okay, when Jupiter and Mars came together at zero degrees with sign of, sign of Gemini, you guys won't believe this. This guy named Tim Berners-Lee, who I believe was also a Gemini, um, produced the proposal document that became the blueprint for the World Wide Web for the internet. The internet, the blueprint for the internet was introduced on the day that Mars and Jupiter conjoined at zero degrees of the sign of Gemini. And of course, Gemini is all about communication and it's an air sign and it has a lot to do with the internet. So I find that to be very, very interesting. Another thing that happened March 9th of 1989, that was just a couple of days before this activation, the Soviet Union submits to the jurisdiction of the World Court political revolutions of 1989 and ultimately the collapse of communism in Eastern Europe and the fall of the Berlin Wall that happened in November of that year. So those are some, um, you know, big important themes that were present then and that, you know, we could see again reflected now somehow. March 13th, the day after this activation, a geomagnetic storm that caused the collapse of the Hydro-Quebec power grid, six million people left without power for nine hours. Some areas of the Northeastern US and Sweden also lost power and an aurora that was seen as far as Texas. And then on March 24th, just 12 days later, less than two weeks later, Exxon Valdez oil spill in Alaska's Prince William Sound, the Exxon uh, that spilled 11 million gallons of oil into the ocean in Alaska, which was like a big deal. So all of that being said, I do think let's bring it back to where we're at now. Okay. This particular Mars Jupiter conjunction happening in the mid degrees of the sign of Gemini opposite the moon. And when, when that one happened, the moon actually was coming into a conjunction. So the moon was conjunct Mars and Jupiter in their conjunction at zero degrees of Gemini in 1989. And today we have the moon in exact opposition with Mars and Jupiter in their conjunction in the mid degrees of the sign of Gemini. So we've got Gemini and Sagittarius. And we've also for this one got Saturn in a square. That is telling us that just and, and when we had that one Saturn and Neptune were an exact conjunction and with this one in the sign of Capricorn and with this one we have Saturn retrograde in the sign of Pisces which is again like breaking down systems of authority and control and government that have defined the past we're at another cultural revolution point okay so I find that very interesting how the literally like what happened that led to the fall of the Berlin Wall and communism in Eastern Europe that had been a defining factor of that era happened literally the week that that alignment came together. And now we have this situation playing out and I do think there could be the same type of revolutionary tone going on around the world in terms of systems of government and control and various forms of power and structure and hierarchy that are also in the process of being toppled somehow. So it'll be very interesting to see over the next several months how that plays out. Because if you see March 9th was when that when the Soviet Union, you know, submitted to the process that eventually led to that downfall in November.
So we're talking about a seeding process right now that we may not truly see the come to its fruition for several months. But when we look back, this may be have where the, the origin point came to for whatever goes on in the future. Okay. Number two on that list, I feel like what is coming now with this Mars Jupiter conjunction in the sign of Gemini is going to lead to phase two of the internet somehow. Some type of technological or communication breakthrough having to do with information traveling through the airways, entering a new milestone in some type of big upgrade or innovation. It could have to do with like AI and all that type of stuff that has already been, you know, building and coming to fruition and gaining more public awareness but there's going to be some type of shift in terms of the way that the collective is using some type of communication technology that is beginning now and that becomes like the big thing that literally defines the future maybe even the next 20 years moving into the pluto aquarian age and then maybe even you know could be the thing that somehow connects us to because <sighs> Moving into the age of Aquarius, like there's, we're going to be, there's going to be changes in the way that information to our relationship with information. Like I, I, I don't even really know how to describe, but it, I don't know if it has to do with like, like telepathy and enhanced ways that we are like able to process and receive information, or if it's like the te technology, things to do with like technology, um, that happen in a way that just like really enhances like our ability to interact with and receive communication, or if it's changes that happen within our brain somehow like I don't know exactly what it is but as we move into the age of Aquarius like this is a space age this is a there's going to be a huge enhancement in the way that our mind is working the way that we're processing information what we're understanding the way that we're using our mind or maybe it's like has to do with like the power of our thoughts and stuff like that I don't know but like um that type of thing like something to do with that is gonna find its origins around now just like it would be it would have been like trying to describe the internet and what it was going to do and how it was going to change the world back in 1989 without knowing what that was just from like looking at the energy and trying to describe it you know what i mean like but the fact that literally the blueprint for the internet happened the day that jupiter and mars lined at zero degrees of the sign of gemini um I feel like that is significant and I think that right now this is going this alignment is going to be like the next chapter of that so phase two of the internet that is my prediction that we're going to be seeing over the next 20 years something that starts around now that totally revolutionizes the way that we are dealing with the internet or something like that now that being said what was the next very next thing on that list was this geomagnetic storm that happened that collapsed the power grid uh six million people left without power for nine hours and we can totally see that because in this chart of that 1989 alignment mercury who rules the sign of gemini was in the in a conjunction to the north node okay square the mars and jupiter in the sign of pisces what do i always say about pisces it breaks things down it dissolves things i'm telling you guys and with this one this one that we're at now this alignment being in a almost exact square to saturn we could really see some big communication or power outages or breakdown like collapsing or hacked connections somehow blocked communication communication interference down communication down power line down detector just like going off like crazy information blackouts that type of stuff there could be some like real significant obstructions or blockages to the flow of information to an idea that's trying to come out as well this could also be you know it's it's interesting because even back then, and there's a lot of the same themes going on. We've got this Saturn Pisces theme that was present then and that is present now. Obviously, the Mars and Gemini theme and the Jupiter and, well, the Mars, Jupiter together and Gemini theme. And then, then also, what's very interesting, what I find very interesting about these two charts, the black moon of all things was in almost the exact same location in both of these alignments. In 1989, for the zero degree alignment, the black moon was at three degrees of the sign of Libra, another air sign, another communication sign. For this one, when we have the alignment happening on Wednesday, the black moon is at five degrees, only two degrees off of where the black moon, five degrees of the sign of Libra, only two degrees off of exact 
location where the black moon was the last time that that happened. And again, like I said, that's another air sign. That's also, there could be, and it, it could be, um, there could be something that happens, some type of communication breakdowns that triggers some type of like fears, financial fears, or things having to do with like the material world generally. Like, um, I don't know, but the, there could be, this is also going to lead to relationship breakdowns, partnership changes, and big changes having to do with money and finances, what we're spending money on. It's going to expose the true value of things and what we truly value as well. But I don't know, like, it's very interesting to me how the black moon <laughs> is in Libra both times in a conjunction. It's impacting, like, the material world and, like, levels of comfort or um, peace. Also, it could be very just dis <laughs> black moon in the sign of Libra. That's, like, really, like, issues that are disrupting the peace. Also, surfacing, like, toxic give and take situations, things that are out of balance anywhere where there's a disruption in the reciprocity of things that is leading to imbalance and disharmony and lack of peace and lack of, obviously, like, balance and the ability to create and grow properly. I don't know could be like whatever's going on right now could be like triggering things along those lines as well with the black moon and the sign of Libra but it, it it's very likely that there could definitely be some type of information distortion or restriction or interference going on interference is a major theme that we could be dealing with right now as well because we're talking about a square to saturn on the greatest energetic peak that we have in every two years and saturn limits controls restrains holds things down holds things back so when you've got something that just wants to go through a process of exponential growth and like explode and expand outward coming up against this 90 degree angle with Saturn, the force that already limits and already represses things. Um, obviously this is a recipe for extreme tension, extreme frustration, explosions, eruptions, volatility, rage. Okay. And a general lack of inner peace and self-control. Okay, and that could be also where the black moon comes in, the shadow side having to do with issues surrounding peace and balance and harmony. And it could definitely be causing turbulence in relationships as well. Okay, so don't be surprised if there's some type of inability to communicate properly or there's some type of like, if, if the internet is literally um, not working for some reason over the coming weeks. Accidents also, the next thing on there, March 24th, that same period of time, that huge Exxon, Exxon Valdez oil spill, 11 million gallons of oil into Alaska's Prince William Sound. That's also a really big deal and not a surprise when we've got, we had Saturn and Neptune in a conjunction in the sign of Pisces and then this activation squaring the the zero degree conjunction squaring mercury ruling the conjunction in the north node also in the sign of pisces pisces and neptune have to do with oil and so i mean we could very well see something like that again we could see a big oil spill that happens but i do think you know with the mars and it could also be water it could also be fire but air travel to me is kind of sticking out more because we're talking about such a strong Gemini energy. Remember, that conjunction in 89 was also an Earth sign conjunction. It was Earth and it was air because it started at 29 Taurus and then it transitioned to the zero degrees of Gemini. Um, and again, Mercury and Pisces, Saturn was conjunct Neptune exactly. Not surprised that that manifested in the context of oil. We could definitely, as I said, you know, we could definitely see oil again, but... Um, I don't know, tornadoes, things to do with air, uh, big fires as well, explosions, um, or things to do with pilots, planes, air travel for some reason could be like relevant right now. Things to do with also um, financial and governmental systems or attacks on financial and governmental system. Whenever we're talking about a strong Martian energy, especially, you know, with a Saturnian influence there, it can bring up potential for attacks. So we could see things like that going on. Ultimately, though, it's going to lead to whatever happens now, whatever contention or contention or conflict or battles or, you know, destructive events or circumstances or like innovative great invention as well mercury and or not mercury gemini uh mars and jupiter in the sign of gemini this is a 
very, very inventive mental energy, of course. And so there is great potential for innovation and inventions, but also again, for this like volatility and contention. However, regardless of which of these octaves is manifesting, the ultimate outcome is going to be the same, which is going to be some type of mass awakening that comes from this somehow moving forward throughout the coming months. It is going to unlock this new phase of again, like technology and innovation and growth as well. Lots of futuristic inventions are going to come from this after we move through the Saturnian energy. After we get through the spring about of 2025, we're going to see a lot of the plans and ideas that came to fruition now begin to actually um, become available and more expansive and um, go through the process of growth that we may feel like they should be going through now, but is being limited, held back, restricted, because there's a need to do things carefully. As I said earlier, this energy wants us to be slow. It wants us to be deliberate. It wants us to be patient. It wants us to be careful and cautious and make sure that we're doing everything right, that we are paying attention to details, that we are, you know, like the fine print is that we're that we're clear on all of that like a, a very narrow-minded focus on like the smaller aspects of things because it wants us to have a solid foundation and whatever it is that we're building this is like the effort and the time it's like when you put so much into something the value of it and the strength of it and the like longevity of it increases and so that's what's going on here like we're being forced to create masterpieces instead of just creating things that will be flimsy and fall apart after a certain amount of time. So there is a longer time requirement required right now in the process of what it is that we're building, growing and creating because these are things that are going to be uh, fundamental essentially actually to our growth moving forward and they just have to be done right now again though that doesn't like negate the fact that it's probably going to be really frustrating and it's probably going to be super counterintuitive and go against like all of our impulses to slow ourselves down right now but that really is the best way to move through and navigate this energy to get the most productive results and to avoid the most backlash that uh is also likely to be pretty significant right now if we are just being reckless and rushing ahead prematurely acting without um you know thinking things through and honoring Saturn and having patience and being strategic okay so all of that now I also feel like this activation this window this energetic window that we're moving through right now I do think it's changing us fundamentally, not only in terms of the way that the world around us is changing as a result of it and the way that that's going to change our lives moving forward. But also I do think that it is probably like on an energetic level in terms of like our brain, like fundamentally changing us. I feel like there are parts of our brain that are like coming online that have perhaps been latent for very long periods of time. You know how like scientists or whatever have always said that humanity, we only use like a small portion of our brain. I feel like uh, an additional portions of our brain might be being lit up now and not in a way that's going to go away but in a way that's only going to build as we move forth into this new energy and you know we are receiving more greater emanations from the galactic center moving forward as we transition into the age of Aquarius and come back out of these darker age Kali Yuga energies into a greater golden age of light that is pulling us forth through the course of the next 10,000 years that we are at the gateway of right now um there's a reason why you know they're golden ages and it's because we have a greater unity internally with cosmic consciousness I do believe and as we go through the dark ages we it's sort of like a fall from our ability to be enmeshed with the higher states of cosmic consciousness on these energetic levels and it, as we come out of the darker age energy and cycle back into the golden age energy it is going to slowly and subtly activate these latent parts of our brain that is going to change the way that the energy within our brains and the synapses within them are 
activating in the neural pathways and as a result it's going to literally change the way that our mind is working and I feel like people are going to be thinking differently and our minds are literally going to be working not the same as they used to. Thoughts, visions, and ideas are going to become very very powerful in a way that is consciously discernible moving into this new energy, moving into the future and over the next 20 years I feel like we're going to be going through sort of like life courses in how to use our mind differently in this new energetic environment that um we are emerging into these abilities have been and are now being activated I do think as I said in this next phase of our lives is going to be about sort of teaching us how to use our minds properly moving forward this ultimately I do think is going to lead as a component of the awakening factor right now which we know is going on anyways we're narrating the shift of the ages on this channel we know that we're in a process right now of going through a collective paradigm shift as a result of um a spiritual awakening, a conscious awakening. And there are many like light code activations or like activation points that I feel like are incrementally moving us through that process as we move through time and space. And this is another significant one that is going on right now. Like this is another like code that is being activated that is like leveling us up in terms of our ability to interact with these elevated frequencies that are coming in right now. And the ultimate outcome of that is going to be this much more self-empowered experience of our own experience being us, right? Of who we really are of what we're truly capable of and it's going to bring major breakthroughs and it's going to bring major breakdowns some people and people are gonna you know depending on the nature of the individual mind some people are gonna be able to handle it some people are not some people are gonna have total mental breakdowns okay some people are not gonna be able to deal with this energy some people are gonna totally lose it some people are gonna spin way out of control some people are gonna take a long time to figure out how to recalibrate their brain to function normally or properly in this energy some people have been waiting for this activation their entire lives some people have been waiting for this moment for things to start speeding up and for like their piece of the puzzle to start making sense and making sense at will and they're going to discover or they're going to fall into this purpose or this destiny that just begins to bloom and blossom around them and everything's going to start making sense you know so it really just depends. We all have different roles. We're all at different places. So if you see people that are melting down, that can't handle it, that can't wrap their head around reality, we have to have patience. This is another dynamic. Like we need to not be judgmental. We need to, we need to have patience. We need to try to have as elevated understanding as possible. And we also need to know this is not a time when we can control anybody else. The best way that we can help anybody else in this energy is through leading through our own example. This entire period of time right now is about wisdom gained through experience, the lessons that we learn through the trials and the tribulations that we go through and how we choose to apply them consciously to our experience to change the way that we're reacting and acting and with our reality and the way that we are moving through and choices and decisions the way that we are uh, allowing reality to compose itself around us we have an opportunity to literally implement what we've learned in the past moving forward into the future and if we choose to do that that is the best way that we can help other people literally through just being an example through our own autonomy and independence and ability to move forward based on our own authentic truth Ruth right now with like the courage and the strength and the faith that is required okay that is how we have the greatest impact I do think in terms of sort of moving the needle and helping other people is simply through inspiring them through our own example now a lot of people are not going to be inspired through your example a lot of people are probably going to have uh be very triggered by it remember we also have a black moon in Libra right now this is triggering inadequacies within people and they're having a real hard time coping with having to deal with you know that they aren't necessarily who they try to appear to be and if they're honest with themselves they're not going to fit in any longer with the group that they've always defined themselves by and this is also bringing up issues relating to the dimensions and the aspects of ourselves that we betray and give away in order to receive and to be perceived certain ways and to you know have money and have material possessions and stuff like that and a lot of people are going to be going through some major relationships Relationship triggers and having to face their own shadows as well on the back end of other people coming into their own power and going through these personal transformations so self and others 
our relationship to ourselves and the way that it impacts our relationship dynamics in our lives. These are going to be major themes also that are coming up now that we're dealing with through the Mercury retrograde process that we're going through right now, moving into actually the new moon in Virgo that's coming up next as well, which is going to bring a lot of things to an end and close a lot of doors and turn a lot of pages as well, especially in terms of relationship dynamics, agreements, partnerships, uh, the, our own appearance and image and stuff like that. And we'll, we'll obviously get into all of that. But um, as a result of these new truths that we are coming to understand and see, either now or moving through this period of time, as a result of maybe some things that happen, we are going to start making many adjustments in life, detaching or separating, you know, as I said, especially I think coming up here in September from people in circumstances that we realize are just doing no good. We are going to change our standards of behavior and morality that we realize are no longer appropriate for us based on whatever it is that we're figuring out or is becoming apparent to us right now we will realign our conceptions of duty and responsibility as well more in accordance with this newly emerging understanding of ourselves or of reality and this process as I said is likely to bring about a significant amount of tension also confusion not seeing things clearly, not really sure, not knowing whether to go forwards or backwards to expand or contract. That is also a major issue right now because we're talking about this force, again, calling for exponential growth, but also this force that is limiting us and that is suppressing us. Mercury is also retrograde at zero degrees of Virgo. It's interesting because on that first conjunction in 89, Mercury was in the sign of Pisces with the North Node in a square to Mars and Jupiter. Now, now we have Mercury retrograding at zero degrees of Virgo. This could be, there could be some type of significant emphasis also on like past information, but that is also like Mercury rules the sign of Virgo retrograde that is also like communication blockages communication interferences like misunderstandings things that need to be cleared up things that need to be revised Virgo also has to do with money and finances and financial situations. Um, Ah, so you know that same that same theme there could definitely be something having to do with like information or communication breakdowns or interference going on somehow but um it with mercury retrograding at zero degrees of virgo it may be best to spend some time alone during this period of time things are likely to be very noisy very chaotic very like whipped up and like whirlwind out there other people's advice and thoughts and opinions are also likely to be of very little value right now i wouldn't go just taking anybody's advice be very very careful again saturn be very careful very deliberate in your selection of advisors if you are going to go to somebody else for advice right now but with mercury retrograde it really is i mean and saturn's even in the sign of pisces which is god higher power right like the best advice is coming from your conscience and your internal knowing in this energy, okay? Be very careful listening to other people. Again, actually other people and their advice and their emotional reactions and what they think may be to our detriment in this energy. Again, this is not energy where we want to allow ourselves to be provoked into any type of choice, action, decision, or behavior based on what anybody else says or thinks. This is where we are making, right, wise choices, wise decisions, saying, smart things being very strategic based on patterns that we've seen play out before based on wisdom that we've gained through experience based on things that we have done and said and seen and lived and you know no may or may not be in our best interest and then actually acting on the right choice okay so that's how we want to use this energy be very 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 careful uh just going to war over something especially if it's not even if somebody else like planted it in your head somehow okay um the real challenge right here that we need to like come to terms with is to increase and go forward in some area of our lives while also cutting back in another area of our lives. There has to be a give and take in this energy. That's how we get to the breakthrough. That's how we get to the uh, resolution when we're dealing with the square. Wherever you have Saturn and Pisces in your chart right now, this is most likely where you may might need to cut something loose or let something go. Wherever you have Gemini and Mars and 
Jupiter right now, this is what is trying to grow and expand. And so if you can be deliberate about knowing your own chart, knowing how these energies are playing out in your life and consciously taking actions to maybe like trim off some of that Pisces, uh, Saturn stuff going on and work to cultivate some of the Gemini energy wherever Mars and Jupiter are, that's a good way to consciously work with this energy as well to maybe like just help facilitate whatever you got going on instead of just getting caught up in the haywire crossfire of all of this. This could also very much have to do with things that have been going on since the end of 2020, beginning of 2021 as well, as that was when the Saturn-Jupiter conjunction came into an alignment and we are at the first quarter square of that aspect. So Things that began building, began coming into for formation December 2020, very beginning January first part of 2021, those also are at sort of like a breakthrough or a breakdown point as well. Um, just where we're at represented energetically right now, okay? So there can be a feeling obviously of restlessness and uncertainty when we've got this energy on one hand that wants to charge forward, but on the other hand that really wants to hold back, feeling that something is wrong but not sure really what it is. Again, don't act prematurely. The answers will most likely come to you. The solutions will most likely come to you if you can just wait it out a little bit in this energy. Patience and not rushing things is going to help here be financially responsible during this period of time as well there might also be sort of like an impulse to sort of throw caution to the wind and just spend as much as you want on whatever you want because you don't want to feel like you have restrictions people are really 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 not cool with feeling restricted in any way and that could be very much in terms of financial restrictions and stuff as well right now but the more financially responsible we can be maybe even if the impulse is to do the opposite it's going to be beneficial in the long term because remember this is about <sighs> This is about the long term and the bigger picture here, you guys. And then we've got Mars there that wants it instantaneous in the moment. But Jupiter's the bigger picture, the whole story, the bird's eye view, you know, like the whole thing. And Saturn, this is like the, this is endurance and longevity. This is the long term. So this is about the long term and the bigger picture, not about instantaneous growth, achievement, success, whatever, and rushing forward, okay? This is about like the legacies of the future that we're laying, not about like the thing that we're building just for the momentary satisfaction and pleasure. It's a very different vibe. So that's what the, that's what like the, um, the drag on all of this, the resistance on all of this is really about. So it is though, opportunities are likely to present themselves in this energy. Take opportunities to broaden your scope and release yourself from limitations that have held you back, but take care to do so responsibly and not in a way that is destructively disrupted or just generally diluted in any type of a way. Again, and there is a likely to be a very strong know-it-all energy right now that has some pretty uh, instantaneous and severe karmic backlash that goes on. So there's that also. Um, but it all, again, it comes back to the same lesson. If we are thinking things through, if we are using the past precedent, if we are, you know, looking at the bigger picture and keeping that in mind, um, you're likely to have some very productive, significant progress. It might not be fast, but it will be valuable moving forward, okay? This is also, as I said, Black Moon and Libra, weird that it was the same place both times around. This is gonna impact relationships, agreements, and financial dynamics, triggering fears of having to face things alone, or something that perhaps has been hidden, being exposed, that we're having to deal with and not really all that thrilled about, like, knowing you know there could be some secrets coming out right now that we're finding out about that it's like once you know you can't unknow you know once you go you can't go back but things will never go back because now I know this and now everything has to change going forward and I would have preferred to not to know it but if that's the truth that's the truth and now I've got to alter my behavior and my 
situation as a result. So a lot of people are going to be dealing with that and just kind of like the fears and the pains associated with that type of thing as well. Discovering ultimately though, the true value of things will be an emerging theme that goes on over this period of time as well. It's going to be in terms of currency, like literally financial markets and global economies and stuff like that, financial systems generally, but also in terms of relationship dynamics, personal preferences, personal value systems, personal desires. We're in a massive of time of shifting values and preferences right now as well and that light bulb moment definitely a component of that is going to have to do with us redefining what it is that we personally value what we personally want and what we're attracted to as well and also how we want to present ourselves and coming up here in September I feel like that's going to lead to a lot of changes also um lastly the last thing I want to bring up one last time is this theme we're talking about Mars with Jupiter square Saturn Mars is like the common man, okay? And Saturn, this is the establishment. This is authority. This is government. There could be some major, major clashes that are going on between like man versus government, um, riots, protests, violence, tension, hostility. This is just likely to be a very very heated contentious time as i've said several times this is a revolutionary energy people are going to be coming head to head with whatever they feel like is overly limiting or restricting their freedom or their freedom of expression and people are going to be feeling like they are fighting the right righteous fight okay and this is actually a level up like I've said we are in the process of leveling up even if it seems like it's happening through some pretty like brutal circumstances playing out out there or even if we don't fully understand how this could lead to a good thing it is actually moving us in a more positive direction in the context of this mass collective awakening that is the overall kind of energetic goal right now now. Um, but people are going to have a hard time controlling themselves in this new energy and also moving forward. Like I said, like this is not necessarily going away. This is very frenzied energy right now. That's another way. Like it makes me sort of think of kind of like this, like whipped up frenzied energy and also moving forward. Like, again, we are going to have to adjust to the the newly uh, like the mental energy okay that is incoming that is growing that is expanding moving forward we're not i don't think going to go back to the previous levels of mental energy and i think that people are going to be literally as i did the whole thing earlier changing the way that they're thinking moving forward um but again we do not want to allow the the major caution here is allowing yourself to be emotionally provoked or persuaded to act against your true best interests on somebody else's behest like essentially like harvesting your energy to work for their particular motives okay and that's going to be happening a lot and we've got to be really careful about that especially again with this like more frenzied energy and people sort of catching the vibe of other people and getting whipped up and stuff like that practicing self-discipline pulling ourselves out of it okay being more isolated self-control personal strategy self-analysis thinking long and hard before we think and act this is going to be going against the natural impulse right now but it is the best way to respond in these energies so i'm gonna wrap it up you guys i feel like i have pretty much driven the point home here i have talked about everything that happened in 1989 i've talked about the way that the energy is functioning right now i've talked about these greater overall emerging themes that i think are going on i'm going to get back into that a little bit more in a minute with the saving symbols but also the best ways that we can personally navigate this energy in this more like fireball laden energetic environment that we might be moving through um <clears throat> let me talk about the sabian symbols really quick I'm actually there's a lot of them that I'm going to read all of the activation points are like critical symbols today I feel like describing what we're moving into what this really means and what's going on here first of all I will read the position of the sun and the earth just to sort of like set the, the stage for this so the position of the sun on Wednesday is at 23 degrees of Libra that Sabian symbol is in a circus the bareback rider displays her dangerous skill so then we've got risk taking we've got big like shows going on we've been talking about how we've been in a period of time right now we're still in Leo season it's all about people sort of putting on these big shows but there could just be big sort of like dangerous displays going on and like all the world is a circus you know what I mean 
And then we've got the position of the earth. What's happening on the ground? A big bear sitting down, waving all of its paws. This is a very defensive attitude again. Like I feel like people are ready to react. People are ready to respond and they are ready to be on the attack if they need to, if they feel like they're in a defensive position and like something, you know, again, like, the good fight though, like I'm defending what is mine. Like I feel like people are coming from a place of just like feeling like they have no other choice essentially in terms of these emotional reactions or defensive reactions that could be going on. We have the position of the moon at an exact opposition to the Jupiter-Mars conjunction at 17 degrees of Sagittarius. That Sabian symbol, you guys, is an Easter sunrise service. So a rebirth, um, Reemergence of the light. All right. Interestingly enough, we have the position of Saturn at 18 degrees of Pisces, only one degree off exact square to this alignment. Um, in a huge tent, a famous revivalist conduct his meeting with a spectacular performance. We've got another spectacular performance going on. All the world is a stage. And in this case, it is about this spiritual revival. So we have an Easter sunrise service, the position of the moon. And then we've got a spiritual revivalist talking about a collective spiritual revival that could very much be underway. And again, that's the position of Saturn in the square. Okay. So Saturn is the challenge. Saturn's the obstruction. With Saturn at that degree, it makes me feel like, again, there could be some type of collective spiritual revival that comes about as a result of whatever it is we overcome or endure through in, in this energy. The position of the conjunction itself, it's 17 degrees of the sign of Gemini. The head of a robust youth changes into that of a mature thinker. It's so funny to me that that's the degree because aside from what it actually means, it's talking about this mentalized upgrade, right? This evolution taking place within the context of one's own mind. But it's also funny to me because where was the 1989 conjunction? It was at zero degrees of the sign of Gemini. And this one is at the midpoint in the sign of Gemini. So it is also this maturation of the mental energy from then until now, which also makes me think of like the phase two of the internet type of situation, the birth of uh, internet 2.0 that is coming online right now so we've got that as well it's crazy to me that that's the position of the alignment when it's in a square to Saturn Gemini is also a sign that represents the youth Mars is also a sign that represents the youthful younger energy Saturn this is maturity this is duty this is responsibility this is the test this is a wisdom that we gain through the experience that saving symbol like literally says it all and then we were talking about the Easter sunrise service the the rebirth and the uh, awakening the return of the light and also the spiritual revival that's going on as well um and then zero the position of gemini ruling that energy zero degrees of virgo in a portrait the significant features of a man's head are artistically emphasized so more attention being placed on what's going on inside the mind and then we even have venus at 12 degrees of the sign of virgo a bride with her veil snatched away seeing something suddenly clearly something suddenly being exposed and it's also pay attention to that pay attention to that because that is the degree 12 degrees of virgo that is the degree where the new moon in virgo is going to be coming up in september which is also very a very significant new moon in the context of relationship dynamics so there could be some things that you're finding out about other people and the energy right now that are going to lead to major relationship breakdowns moving forward into the month of september Okay, so all of that, the circus with the bareback rider, the tent with the famous revivalist and the spectacular performance, the big bear sitting down waving all its paws, this like hyper aggressive energy, that's the position of the earth, the bride with the veil snatched away, something suddenly exposed to us, maybe in the context of other people or something that, you know, is made suddenly known the Easter sunrise service, the rebirth and the, the reawakening in a portrait, the significant features of a man's head being emphasized and the head of a robust youth changes into that of a mature thinker. It's all about what's going on in our mind and this phase of maturation and growth that we're going through right now and what it's going to turn us into and how it's going to alter things going forward. But in the meantime, 
could get a little bit scrappy down here, you guys. So that's what I have to say about the astrology. I'm going to do a real quick tarot reading today because I went on and on and on longer than I had anticipated or meant to uh, about the... I've noticed that I do that. I've noticed that when Mercury's retrograding, I will just find myself talking for so long and not even realizing that I did it. So my videos are probably going to be a bit, little bit longer over the next coming weeks. But anyways, let's talk about the tarot for a minute. It's interesting because... <laughs> The two cards that we have on the back of the deck, we've got the Hangman and then we've got the Ace of Wands. That's also like talking about some new inspiration, sudden burst of life based on some illumination that is gained from seeing things from a different perspective or altering our viewpoint or, I don't know, gaining some type of an awareness. Now, in terms of the cards that we've got coming out, interesting we've got a page of cups and then we've got a four of pentacles you know on one hand this could be saying be open perhaps to opportunities that come even if they seem a bit unconventional or a little bit like weird or not maybe what you would have uh expected because there could be something valuable in that but also on the other hand be very careful about what you are investing or c committing to right now because they might not be as you know, serious perhaps as you think they are, or there could be something just a little bit like, um, I don't know, like not fully, just we want to make sure again that we are really thinking things through before we are just like accepting any offer that comes in this energy right now. Even if it seems like exciting or new or different, just be kind of careful. It could be a very good thing, but on the other hand, it could also be something that is just not as serious as we think it is. Um, the page of cups can also be love offers though. There could be, be careful with relationship dynamics as well. The other side of this card, the, the cards that we have going on, again, we've got the four of pentacles. We've got the five of cups in reverse. And we've got the six of cups in reverse. This or not cups, coins. This is to me also talking about a need to not jump to conclusions about things with the five of pentacles in reverse and the six of pentacles in reverse this could be bringing up like things not feeling super stable um not really being sure what we can trust or not really being sure if like things have our best interest in mind or if things are going to be balanced or if things are going to be fair our advice really i feel like is here to like kind of hold off before committing to things we've got a four of pentacles and we've got a four of swords four of swords is like notoriously about like taking a break taking a pause like taking a moment to reflect okay four of pentacles this is also like kind of like holding tight to something so i don't know i feel like generally kind of in a nutshell this is indicating again like a need to be very slow careful and deliberate before we either react to things that maybe we think are unfair or where we think we're being cast out like there's a great potential for misinterpreting things and things not being as they actually appear so just be very careful again before like jumping into action or having a big reaction about something that you know you later come to find just isn't exactly what you thought it was and creates this bigger problem where it's if you just didn't do anything in the first place like it would have resolved itself type of thing you know what I mean but again ultimately on the back of the deck we do have the ace of wands and the um hanged man so it's almost like wait on the illuminated impulse that is coming make sure that you really have seen things from all sides and angles you've looked upside down you look behind the thing like you know what's going on you've read the fine print before you decide to light that fire and launch into action so i don't know that's what i'm saying about the tarot today you guys let's we're gonna get one more card now this is a synchronicity card we're gonna ask god spirit universe one additional piece of advice or guidance that can benefit us or that we should keep in our mind and be aware of as we do move through this big energy and it is one of my favorite cards it says think of good and you know we've got jupiter and mars in the sign of gemini <laughs> gemini is all about our thoughts jupiter is everything good mars is what we're actively doing consciously actively aligning ourselves to the best of our ability with good thoughts today okay the mouth of the righteous is a well of life 
that's pretty that's pretty direct okay when we're talking about a mars jupiter conjunction in the sign of gemini that has everything to do with what is coming out of our, our mouth okay so we want to make sure that we stay on the righteous side of things today again i've been talking about this righteous energy as well anyways okay the mouth of the righteous is a well of life proverbs 10 11 as you continue to think on whatsoever things are true lovely noble and of good report you will gradually change the negative patterns of your thought you will become aware of a gradual change and think constructively based on what you know to be right and good and honestly you guys i'm not even going to use more words going on about that because this is another one of those magical moments when the synchronicity card perfectly reflects everything that i just got done talking about i feel like for the past like hour or so there it is you guys think of good that is the magic that's the magic key for where we are at right now. And that is the lesson that we are going to learn in terms of how to use our own magic moving forward through this next area area and era of our lives. So that's what I'm going to say today, you guys. Message from the stars, message from the cards. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope there was something in there for you that is of value to you in some capacity if you like the video please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel share it with your friends if you think they would also enjoy this type of astrology content leave me comments you guys i am so grateful for your presence here i truly value what you have to say your contributions to my channel mean so much to me um if you are having experiences that line up with what i'm talking about in these videos please let me know in my comment section below that is very valuable to me and if you want to know what's on this whiteboard see the whole thing i take a picture of it and i post it in a Facebook group that I have that is linked in my description box below. Other than that, you guys come back with me on Friday. We've got a Jupiter Saturn square that we're going to get into and a lot more energy to talk about. And I will be here to talk about it. So you should be here too. You don't want to miss it. I will see you next time, guys. Have a very beautiful midpoint of your week. And until then, bye.